continue today with um, basics of Optitech. So let's just log in. So in the last video, we went over the sort of basic structure of OptiTax, where everything is, <clears throat> sorry, um, and uh, some of the basic tools and um, the parts of a pattern piece. So we're going to go over a few more basic tools, kind of wrap up our, you know, OptiTax basics. Um, and last uh, video, we went over how to use the draft tool. Uh, but this time I'm going to use a sort of different function to create a pattern piece. And we're going to go up to piece, new piece, and use one of these presets. Um, so we have lots of different options to choose from. So let's just create a rectangular piece. And you can name the piece. So I'm going to keep it piece for now because I want to show you how to change the name of the piece once it's created um, and also change the grain line. Now here what we're going to do is I'm just going to set the length and width of our rectangle uh, piece so I can set it to whatever I want so maybe a, a length of 20 inches and let's say a width of 15 inches. Oops. And then once everything is set you go ahead say OK and your piece is created. Um, very nice and very quick and we can use the create new piece a lot um, because especially when we're going to do slopers and things like that um, it is based on a sort of very basic shape uh, that we can create uh, using that piece new piece and a lot of pieces that we do create um, will sort of be very similar to one of these standard shapes okay so we went over how to use the cut tool or the cut piece tool we went over the draft tool so let's look at you know some of the ways that we can change some of the um, aspects of this piece. So I'm going to um, click on the piece with my right mouse button. And again, just like when we clicked on the points with the right mouse button, um, we get the drop down menu. And I can go to attributes here. And all of our piece attributes or our piece properties um, pops up right here. And I want to go over them because um, this will be a very important menu as moving forward. Um, we can do a lot of things in here. Uh, first what I want to do is if you want to change the name of your piece, and this is going to be very important because um, it will be part of our you know, labeling of pieces um, uh, to give it a proper name. Now this is just a test piece, so I can name it test. Of course, when we are making actual patterns, you'll want to make it something more descriptive, like you know, front bodice or front side bodice or whatever it may be. And then we just hit enter, and we can see that the piece name has now changed. Now what we can also do in this menu is we can protect the piece. And that's the very top box here. And so if I toggle it on, we see that the piece now becomes shaded and it is protected. That shading or these diagonal lines are showing us that this is a protected piece. Now what does that mean? That means I can't change it, I can't alter it. And when we start drafting and using pieces as sort of a template for other pieces, this is going to be a very important function. We can toggle it on and off right in here. So on and off right in here. Okay. Now there's some other stuff in here too, but we'll get that, um, uh, we'll get into that when sort of we come to it. Now a couple of the things I want to show, uh, just a few other basic tools and functions. Um, I'm going to go into the text tool. And this allows us to um, make written descriptions and uh, label information on our pattern pieces. 
So if I go up here and hit the T, or we can see that the keyboard sh shortcut is simply T, so we can just hit that on our keyboard. Or of course, it's also in our text box under, or sorry, toolbox under general tools. So once we are selected on the text bar, we get that nice um, eye bar or the text tool, and we can just go anywhere in our pattern piece and click onto it. Now it's important to click on the actual pattern piece with the text tool. Uh, this will sort of um, pin the text box to that pattern piece. If I were to say, click over here, make a text box, it's no longer pinned to that pattern piece. So if I were to move it around the board or um, format it for printing, uh, the piece would move away and the text would remain. But if we click on the pattern piece, uh, the text is pinned to the pattern piece and we'll move along with it. And we can just go ahead and write whatever we want. And we'll go into, you know, uh, what kind of pattern information needs to be put on each pattern piece in our first project. But let's just test it out. And there we are. So um, if it's not exactly where it, it, you'd like it to be or not as big or small as you'd like it to be, we can grab the arrow tool and I can start to sort of pull it. Um, now what it's asking me is how, you know, I dragged it out to be a little bit bigger and it's saying how exactly big would you like it to be? And here I'm seeing it's uh, making it about 183% bigger. And these are the exact uh, width and height um, size. But you know, if you drag out accurately, um, it will be pretty much, you know, as you want it. You can kind of move it around a little bit like that. And um, we can sort of drag it up and drag it out. Now, if it's pretty far away from where you want it to be, you can go to your internal properties. Now, if it's already up, you can just click on it, make sure that the text is highlighted, and its properties will um, pop up in your internal properties box. Now, if that's not up, you can always, of course, right click on the text and go to attributes, and that will force this to pop up. Now, if you want to set a specific location for your text, that's down here in the X and Y location um, boxes. Now, it's based on this little star point right here. So if we see, it's saying X location about two inches. So if we come down from two inches, that's about where it is. And the Y location is about 12.8 um, inches. So if we come over from the um, 12 inches over here, that's where it is. And we can set it exactly where it is you want it. So maybe I want it aligned with the 10 inches over here on the X. So all I have to do is type that in and it'll bump it all the way over there. Okay, so let's go again. A uh, few other different things. We're kind of gonna bump around because these are all really kind of simple tools, simple functions. And let's go to our rotate piece tool. So um, there's gonna be certain instances where you want to rotate or change your piece around. So this gives the length grain like this. I always kind of like to work with my length grains facing up and down instead of left and right, you know. Whatever works for you is fine. Um, but let's rotate it around. It's a good opportunity to show you how to rotate our pieces. So we can come here to the rotation um, menu in the toolbox, or all these guys up here are also a rotation. We're looking for the rotate piece tool, or R, uh, as your keyboard shortcut. And you can see it's here, and it's also up here. So just click on any one of those or hit R on your keyboard. And this is what the um, rotate piece tool looks like. And what I want to do is I first want to click on a point to set it as the point of rotation. And that means that the whole piece will rotate around that point. Since it's a rectangle, I have four points to choose from. So this is as good as any. So I'm going to uh, align that little star in the middle of the box with that point, click once. And you can see that will sort of pick up the piece. And what I'm going to do is just sort of rotate it around. Now, you don't have to be too exact because a measurement box will pop up asking us very specifically how we would like to rotate the piece. So um, we can sort of, you know, use the green lines to sort of look at how it's being rotated. Um, but I'm going to purposely do it a little bit askew and then click to drop it down. 
Now, as soon as I click, I get the um, rotation measurement box. And it's going to ask us exactly how many degrees we would like to turn uh, our piece. Now we have these presets. Um, you know, 90 is a solid quarter turn. 180 is a flip. Um, and this, of course, since I flipped it up, uh, is about a 90. If I just want it to sort of sit upright so my grain line is going up and down, I'm just going to click that 90 degrees. And we can see that it is now standing right upright. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see. Sorry, I forgot what the zoom is. But no, oh, here it is. Sorry, in the, uh, when you're using a mouse, you can use the scroll wheel. But here we're just going to zoom out. And this is our zoom, so that's a good thing to show you. So you can zoom by a rectangle by dragging out an area of view, or just zoom in, zoom out, zoom all, we'll zoom, uh, all of your pieces within the workspace. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see our full piece. There we go. Okay, so a couple other functions. Um, so as we were talking about before with the measurement box, measurements are very important um, when doing pattern making and um, also, of course, uh, taking measurements are very important as well. So I'm gonna show you a, a, ni a nice little tool called the measure tool and it works kind of like a little virtual um, tape measure. And it's really good for just sort of double checking your measurements um, seeing how big anything is and basically how it works is you click once and you can click on a point so let's just measure this distance we set it at 15 so let's just double check it to this one and it's showing me the distance in the X direction 15 the total distance here the angle of the line so on and so forth and now you see the Y distance is zero because it doesn't go up or down it just goes um, flat across and we don't have to go point to point. I can do random measurements. So just from here to here, see what that is. And again, it's telling me the total distance of that line that I clicked was about 15 and a half inches. Um, it went down, uh, uh, so down 13.38 inches, and it went to the left uh, uh, 7.68 inches. Remember that when we see negatives in the X and Y values, it's just telling us what direction it's going. Negative for x means it's going from right to left, and negative in the y means it's going from top to bottom, down like that. Um, positive, of course, is just the other way around. So uh, positive values go from left to right in the x value, and positive values in the y go from bottom to top. Okay. So those are really good for straight line measurements, as you can see. Um, I can pretty much measure any sort of straight line measurement, um, but a lot of times you have a curve or corners um, that you need to measure. And you, you need to use a slightly different function to go ahead and do that. So let me show you how to do that. So say I wanted to take the measurement of these two sides together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my arrow or select tool, and I'm going to click on the point where I want to start my measurement. And remember, we need to work in a clockwise fashion. So I would need to start here and end here for these two lines. If I were to do the reverse, start here and end here, those of course would be for these other two lines. So I'm going to click this first to highlight it. Okay, that's my beginning line. Then we're going to go to the end point of my measurement. And this function does need uh, to measure in between points. So if you don't have an end point or a beginning point to start your measurement, you need to create one. And of course, we learned how to do that in the last video with our um, place point on contour, uh, or add point on contour, I should say. Now, I'm gonna come here to the, my last point in the two segments that I want to measure, and I'm gonna hold the Shift key down. Now, Shift key, like in many other programs, is the multiple select. 
So I'm going to hold shift and click this end point. And we can see that what happened is this stayed highlighted, this stayed, this became highlighted, and in addition, point number three became highlighted as any point in between the uh, beginning and end point will. So it's saying, you know, everything in between this point and this point is now highlighted. Now to get the measurement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the design menu and the very first selection here, segment length, I'm going to click and it's going to tell me how long that is and that's right here that total length is 35 and that makes sense because if you remember I set this to be a 20 inch by 15 inch uh, rectangle so 20 plus 15 is 35 so everything's working fine and of course this will work on curves it works on you know any sort of jaggedy line it'll give you the total distance of the contour. And this is really important when you are matching up your seam lengths, because of course we always want our seam lengths to match. Okay, a couple other things, and then, um, you know, this will be a little bit of a, a shorter video, because I don't want to overload you on details. Again, a lot of these little, uh, you know, functions we'll, we will pick up um, uh, as we go. But I do want to show you um, how to use uh, the seam allowance tool. So as you know, uh, whenever we're creating a pattern piece, we always, always, always have seam allowance. Um, and this is true for pretty much every edge except for edges that we put on fold. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the seam allowance tool. Um, which looks like a little sewing machine with a plus sign and it says add seam. It's right here and we can find that under our toolbox under the seam section. It's the first one right here. And what we do is we again we work in a clockwise fashion to set our seams. Now um, if I want to go ahead and set a seam for the entire piece it's very easy. I just have to click on a, any point of the pattern piece once, so click once, and then click again on that same point. And that's telling Optitech start and end here. Go all the way around the figure and start and end at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now here we have our seam attributes, and we saw this earlier when we used the cut tool in the uh, first video. But now let's see how it actually works. Down here you set your seam allowance width, and of course depending on what you're doing you'll have a different width. Hems of course have a little bit longer of a seam allowance between one and one and a half inches. Normal seams will be around three eighths to a half inch. Um, smaller seams can be found on things like necklines, collars, smaller details. So you know a good standard for a seam width is about a half an inch, so I'm going to punch in uh, 0.5 which will give us a half an inch seam allowance all the way around the figure. Now let's also look at some of the options we have here. Now these are start, we don't have a start and end because we're going all the way around. These are only for, uh, options are only for, for applying it just to one side or, or a fraction of the piece. But we do have corner options. And this is going to give us a sort of full, unaltered uh, seam allowance all the way around. And we don't typically use uh, this option, which is our default. We will typically use something like this, which is mitering our seam allowance. So it takes off a little bit of the edges around the corners um, and eliminates excess seam allowance. And I'll show you how that looks. Now you might be familiar with this, so um, here, and I can zoom in really close so you can see what that looks like. So basically what it did is it beveled these corners. If I didn't do that, it would come out all the way here to sort of this, this point here. And the reason we do this is we like to eliminate as much excess seam allowance as possible around corners because it makes it easier to sew and it allows um, us to get a sharper point. And, um, hold on just a second. Sorry, 
didn't want that background noise. Um, so it's always a good idea to choose that option two. Um, for the most part, we're always going to be bevel our, uh, or miter, it's called, um, our seam allowance to get rid of that extra seam allowance. Let's zoom back in or zoom back out. Okay. Now, um, I also want to show you how to adjust our grain line. Uh, of course, uh, we went over how important grain lines are in our first video. So how do we set it? It, it will automatically pop up, but Optitex doesn't always know exactly uh, how to set the grain line. It does its best, um, but sometimes it's not right. So what's important to know about Optitex is it doesn't call it a grain line. It calls it a baseline. A little funkier. Um, uh, and we have a bunch of options here on how to set our grain line, or in Optitex, baseline. Now, since I want to change you, might, you might say, oh, we want this one. Now, the new baseline is not actually the tool that we want, and, and it can be a little bit confusing. What we want to do is we want to set baseline direction. Now, this is because we already have a baseline, so I don't need a new one. What I need to do is set it. So I'm going to use this tool, and it is the keyboard shortcut slash, or, um, yep, so you can hit it just on uh, your keyboard with that, or of course it's this one right here. Now how this tool works is I'm going to click once, draw out a green line by moving my mouse in whatever direction I please, and when I click again, it will set that grain line to the angle of the green line that I have just made. So I'm going to click again, and you can see that grain line has been set. Now what I like to do is usually um, when I'm setting a grain line, um, there'll be some part of the pattern that will mimic what the grain line should do. Like say if I want it to go across, I probably want it to be parallel to this line. So I like to use the lines of the pattern. Maybe we want it a bias cut or a bias grain. We can go across like that. Um, instead of just, you know, trying to do it as straight as possible. Because, you know, it, it's very hard to sort of, you can do your best you can. But sometimes you're a little bit off, even if you're just like a little bit off, I look straight. Uh, but again, our grain lines are very important to get straight, and it's just a lot easier to do it um, from point to point. Okay. So there's our grain line. And um, I think there's one other thing I'd like to show you. Um, again, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. Um, because I don't want to overwhelm you with tools and things like that. And again, we are going to um, uh, add more tools as we go. But I do want to show you the um, on fold tool or the half symmetry tool. So I mentioned that before when we were talking about our seam allowance. Oh, one more thing with the seam allowance. I'm sorry, I, I hate to be a little bit jumbled. Um, but I did forget to show you. So I showed you how to do seam allowance all the way around the figure, but what if you only want one side? Well, then what we're going to do is, again, always working in a clockwise fashion. Say I want this edge to have a larger seam allowance. I'm going to start here, click, and then click at the end of where you would like your specific seam allowance to be. Again, always working in that clockwise fashion. Let's just give it a larger one. And now you see that because I'm just doing one edge or one side or one part of the contour, I get start and finish ones. And they will give you a little bit of a different transition into them. So this will give, have it go full up, which is nice for a hem. Um, and you can sort of play around with the different ones uh, and see what they do, but they'll sort of bevel or um, uh, crop off or finish those transitions between the smaller and larger seam allowance uh, allowances a little bit differently. But let's just, this will kind of bring it just sort of full up like that. So now we have a one inch seam allowance here and the rest like this. Okay, and you can also take it off. So say I want to put this on fold. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back over that and boop, set it to zero. And now I know I have no seam allowance here. So again, if you want to take it off, 
you can do that as well. There's also a remove um, seam allowance tool that you can simply do the same thing and it will take it away or you can set it at zero. It's really the same thing. It works uh, equally well. So just, just for the sake of showing you, um, that piece was uh, highlighted. So as soon as I did the remove, uh, all the seam allowance went away. Okay, so you can use that as well or use the seam allowance to do specific areas. Okay, anywho. Half symmetry. So again, this will um, relate to any time we want to put a piece on fold. Um, so remember when we're putting a piece on fold, it means it's a symmetrical piece um, and the fabric will be folded when we place it to be cut and we're going to get two mirror halves that are exactly uh, the same, sort of uh, mirror symmetry like that. So we can set that and look at what pieces uh, will look like when they are folded out or completely cut by setting the half. And this is important too if we're going to do asymmetrical pattern pieces um, uh, because of course we need both halves because that line of symmetry will no longer be there. Um, anywho, so say I want this to be my on-fold line. I click my set half or keyboard shortcut H or you can see it's this one up here. And working clockwise, I'm going to click on the beginning and end of the line I'd like uh, to set as my half. Um, so I clicked up here, then down here, and it opened up the shadow half, okay? Now this is representing my on-fold line. And anything that I do over here will be replicated over here because it's gonna preserve that symmetry. So just as an example, uh, if I move this point, the other side gets moved as well, um, just, just the same as it did there. So again, I can bring it out, and everything I do here is going to be reflected over here. Now, you may want to open up this half, like in the instance of a um, asymmetrical pattern. So just make sure that your piece is selected, go to Piece Properties, and then um, what you're going to uh, do here, you can close your half. Boop. So if you don't want that there anymore, again, um, usually when we print patterns, we don't have the open half or when we cut it because, of course, we need this line to place on the fold. But it's nice to have it to sort of see and um, look at what you're going to do. Do, do, do. So you can toggle it on and off. Now, back in your half symmetry, we have an option to open the half. And let's see what happens when we click that. The whole thing becomes solid. So now my full piece is there, and it's no longer, uh, each side is no longer tied to the other ones. So if I move one side, it's going to move independently um, and not reflect over on this side. Okay. Um, I think that's all we're going to do for today. Um, that goes over all of our basic tools for OptiTex, um, basic tools and functions. Um, and I'm going to pick up uh, in our next video with our first project, which is going to be to create a very simple pillow pattern. Um, so I'll see you then.